to the unchained guy. It looks like we've done very little today. We are absolutely knackered. So we cleared, Kate cleared this wall actually, because it seems to have gone in there. But leveled this bit here, and we've built up this area down here, and we've cleared all along this cliff face here. So now the cats can go along and sit on the edge here and peer down there. You can walk along here, but it's a bit sketchy. And then when it gets to there, it drops off by about three, four foot, and then another three, four foot, so you can't walk down it. And we're looking at moving all this material here and bringing it down to here. There's loads of um, brambles and stuff that we've ripped out today, mainly so the cats can get down here as well. It made a little path. Most of this here, if you stand on it, it just, it goes with you. It all just slides away. Typically, how that happens, it just comes off there and goes down there. This is all loose, but it's enough to support the cat's weight. So that's going to be a bit of a bonfire tomorrow night. Let's try and burn that. We might have a go at clearing the brambles another day. It was enough just to clear this section here, but we uncovered loads and loads of lovely mosses, which we're really hoping we haven't killed off because some of them are just fantastic. Look, they're really nice, and there's some really interesting ones in here. To the point that we've actually bought some. So these things cost us your English pounds like these. Well, we've actually got them here and they're growing wild. So we'll mix in here. Look, see that thing? Really cool. So we're trying to encourage that stuff. Let's keep planting that. And then get rid of all this other nonsense. It's horrible. So I set fire to the... Um, uh, the brambles earlier on. We've got a weed burner over there with a the gas thing. Just lit it and set fire to it and it went right up there. I shit my pants. I've got the hose by out, but it was okay. It went out on its own. I don't know why. I mean, there's not much up there look to go. And we've got a, an arborist guy coming out and he's taking out that tree. He's taking out that tree and he's going to trim this one back. But little does he know, my instruction is going to be to him when he turns up. If you can see anything, get rid of it all the way along that's my plan take it all out all of them it sounds really vicious but there's a lot of plants up there and they're all really quite precarious apart from the ones that are up over the top so there are full trees and like i know you can see back through there but there are trees over the top there so my plan is is take anything that you can see here get rid of it every tree trunk just straight across I only want to see blue sky there because um, stuff on the edge, I, I just, that doesn't really make a lot of sense. It's nice for the birds and that, but there's loads of stuff over the top. Loads of holly, so winter berries. <sighs> right, so look, taking some of this stone. Tomorrow we're going to have a, a go at either placing some of this or splitting it with the grain so that you end up with something a little bit more uh, usable maybe like you know like this sort of size and the idea is is we're going to reuse all of this some of that if we need it definitely these bits here because we're going to put a path in down there so that's the idea a nice swooping path down that way and i've got to build a builder lean to on the back of the workshop oh and that down there it's really really wet and it's just started to dry out so tomorrow I need to get the digger down there and just scratch everything up a bit. Try and get rid of all the little roots and things. Anyway, this is today. Today was clearing this second bit. So this bit is where the patio is going. All the Indian stones down there on pallets. This starts Tuesday. So I've done my bit now, which is taking it down like four to six inches roughly. And then if the builder wants to take any more, that's up to him. But I've just done like, I don't know, what's that? Day and a half work, I suppose, something like that. So I saved a few quid. What's the builder cost? About £300 a day or something. So now we're left with a lot of topsoil, which we're going to shape into something, but we don't know what yet. We've still got to get all these brambles out and the football. That's about the 15th football we've seen. There's some really interesting things up there. Can you see them? All right. Where well, that little dark thing is there. Can you see those things going underneath it? I wonder what they are. Hey. Interesting. There's some weird things up there. Anyway, right, so this, the builder's going to do the patio, put it all back together again. Uh, electrician's supposed to give me quotes to put in outside sockets and like um, a power point down there, which is going to supply the buildings going that way. 
and I also wanted to put an armoured cable down here and also put a double socket and like um, again a, a separate power point here both fed from um, where that pipe is the electricity meter is just behind it or electricity whatever it's called thing where it comes into the house there's a white box on the wall so both from that box underneath one that way one this way and then I can then take power down to the workshop and I can take power and put it into garden lights and stuff out here I'm going to put outside sockets on the house that's easy for me to do and maybe put some lights up I'm not sure yet this is today today is clearing this and leveling this we've taken down the fence that was around the garden look, all this and it was around the back we've just taken it down and we're going to reuse the wood um there's some um weed suppressant going down it's not actually weed suppressant the point of that is to kind of give it like a bed because what we're going to do is we're going to put those stones that are in the back of muppet they're going to be like you know, like crazy paving all down here so we've got of these tiles here these slabs there's 11 of them over there we found so those are going to go here right outside the door we're going to place them down and probably bed them in properly with cement um, and sand a nice mix and bed them in nicely so 11 extra tiles just there and then all of this i'm stood on is going to have that um i'll call it weed suppressant but it isn't and it's going to have that down and then we're going to put some some type one which is around the corner in big bags like big bulk bags of like uh, it's not a hardcore it's kind of like a bedding in grade it's quite fine and then we're going to sit those slabs straight on top so really crudely and then we're going to surround it by like a fine gravel not like this because i don't like the noise of this this bloody stupid cocoa pops rice krispies noise can't stand it and it does this you know wherever the cars go stupid stuff there's a type one in the bags we're gonna need a lot of that there's the indian stone we just want this so it's gray we just want this like a gray silver it's a really just a bland color because we want lots of reflected light no porcelain or anything like that we don't do the lead from the ocean the astip spumanti and what's the latest one think 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 what's the latest wine um Oh, Prosecco. Oh, yeah, we, we, we don't do that silly trend thing. So look, bed it down, some natural slate, gravel all around it, so we can walk on the tiny things. And we've got a lot of that material, a lot of the stone. There's a huge amount up there in the woods, which is why we've got Muppet to go and get it for us. Whoop. There's Muppet. Uh, this reclaimed wood, and we've just put all of the topsoil we've taken off, just flipped it over. It's here, it's going to bed down. It's only going to be three high, like we've just done there, all the way along, just to keep that back, stop it from falling on top of whatever we put here. We don't want to do any more than that because stone falls off of here. It just, you know, through natural erosion, bits just plop down. So you don't want to put anything that's got any kind of value here because it'll get rained on. Oh, little birds. Huh. Right, that's it. It's going to be a quick update. That's like, it took ages, didn't it? So we carry on with this tomorrow. What should, it should end up tomorrow. It should be three high of wood all the way along. We'll just rake this and let it fall down onto the top of this horrible woody stuff that we're reusing. Um, we put the suppressant stuff on top here and then we'll probably take some of the stones we've got and start placing them. It doesn't have to be flat. This isn't like the patio quality. It doesn't need to be like that. This is the back of the house. So it just needs to be um manageable functional so i'm probably going to attach i've got a stainless steel um washing line that i made and that'll attach to the wall over there and then onto the house so clearly you don't want to walk on mud and grass and stuff so that's the point of having gravel some sort of very fine gravel and then all of this stone that we've got here we're just going to reuse all of the natural slate seeing as we are in what used to be a slate mine all of this mine quarry slate quarry so we're going to repurpose it right that's it i think move some of this tomorrow just fill up some of the stuff there oh i'm gonna start doing this this really this annoys me this is just 
This is like, like a ditchy thing here. I just can't stand it. So I had a digger on earlier on and I just scratched away at some of this surface here. It's like compacted. This is like type one. It's like compacted mixture, but this has got mud in it as well. So it actually compacts really well. So you end up with this ditch thing because there used to be a horrible fence here. So I'm just gonna, I can't move these things, which is a real problem. If anyone's got any brilliant ideas how to move them, I would love to know. So a pallet truck cost about 250 pounds for a two and a half thousand kilogram, whatever it's called, 2,500 kilograms. But I don't know, because they've got small wheels, I don't know if they'll actually move on this material. So I don't know. Forklift's a bit expensive to go and buy. Um, I've been looking at um, like skid steers to try and do it, but everything costs a huge amount of money at the moment. Everything, any machines like this are just crazy money. So don't know how to move them, need to move them because there's a shed going to go in here underneath me, which is about four by three meters and they're right in the middle of the shed. This is the edge of the shed. So it's, they're inside the shed right now. They need to go. That will also let me pull back some of this material and fill in this horrible, stupid, mucky thing and clean all this up. I just want it to be a bit more balanced. And then we can get some more of the type one around the corner, bring it in and compact it down. That's the compactor, I've not opened it up yet. I'll probably do that tomorrow. Tomorrow's the last day of sun. So around by the side of the house, which is gonna be where the patio is laid. I want to run the compactor over the hard dry mud at the moment, just to thump it down a bit. And then if the builder wants to take any more off, well, it's up to him. You can see, look, just there. Just bring it across, you know, just balance it. Just let's distribute it. You get these like crappy edges like this and just leave it. So, lots to do. Going to open up the compactor. Oh, sorry. Right, that's it. All done. Oh, there's a timber for the carport, which I'm just walking around here, look. Uh, roughly, it's going to be 4.8 metres by 8 metres. We went to 9. 9 is wherever it is. Uh, 9 point, so 4.8 times 2 gives you 9.6. I think that was 8 where I left it. It's so about 9.6 about here. And we just thought, oh, it's too big. So I've kind of figured that the car's about 2 metres wide. If we give the car 4 metres, so you've got a metre on either side, so an 8 metre car port should be enough. It's only going to put like a, a leg there, a leg there. Yeah, halfway, halfway, and then in the corners. So six posts, which are not here. Everything else is here. Six by twos, they'll go up there, around the top. Um, four by twos, they'll kind of go, uh, four by twos go like, like that and like that. Dip, 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 so that's like six. I can't remember, seven, eight, nine. I think I probably bought about 12. Yeah, I did 12 of them. Load of them. And that's another lean-to, which I was going to put down on the, um, or the, the, the roof material hasn't turned up, as well as the posts. The posts are really hard to get. Um, so this is some other, this is cheaper looks. This is three by two. That's four posts there for the lean-to. And the lean-to's got cheaper roofing on it as well. It's just got this bitumen coated corrugated stuff. I've got like six sheets of that, so that's a lot smaller. But um, I just want somewhere to park the machines, of which, you know, there are a few lying around now. When I'm using them like this, I want to be able to just drive them underneath something. So I figured that I'd put um, just a lean-to down the because Kate won't let me put it here. I was going to move that green thing and build it along there. So that's probably, that's, that's six by three. That's uh, another shed that's going in another day uh so so that is roughly what similar six by three so i could put like a lean to there but she's um she doesn't want me to unless i could negotiate to bring this shed this way and bring these two buildings this way then maybe i wonder if i could take that and move it somewhere like fling it then i wonder if i could put it there oh right Poppy, let's go speak to your mum. I've got a cunning plan. 